webinar, Sustainable Design for Mobility. Today's webinar is presented by Adam Wozniak. Before we get started, I want to share a few logistics. We'll be keeping all attendees muted and cameras off throughout the presentation. We are recording the webinar and it will be up on the AMCO YouTube channel in a few days. The recording will also be distributed along with a copy of the presentation to all attendees. There's time for questions like Adam just said at the end of the presentation. Please use the Q&A feature throughout. If you're experiencing any logistical um, or issues, please use the same Q&A feature and we will do our best to assist you with troubleshooting. Now here is Adam Wozniak. We appreciate the opportunity to present to you and look forward to partnering with you and your organizations and developing sustainable goals for the future. Today we're going to focus on sustainable design for mobility. So if you had not seen the first presentation, we talked about the differentiations and different technologies that are available, the levers that are moving the market space to move forward. That will be available to you through our resources. So feel free to reach out to us or other AMCO resources for that first presentation. So what we need to do is we, we just need to give you a brief legal disclaimer. So, you know, again, here we're creating content. Um, as you are aware, if you're involved in sustainable causes and looking at reducing your scope emissions reductions, content is limited. So as this evolves, we continue to update and move things along, but we need to give you the disclaimer that, you know, the information that we're providing to you today is as truthful and accurate as possible. We do everything that we can to vet the information that we have so that if you present to your customers, you can feel confident that it's factual and there's data to support it. In the event there are there are any issues, please feel free to reach out to us. But again, we do the best we can within our power. Giving you a quick introduction, uh, my name is Adam Wozniak. I'm the senior manager of sustainability for Amco Polymers. Um, I serve 100% within this role. So within the last year, this has been my sole responsibility and we are dedicated resources. With that, uh, we've got resources of Bruce Serafin, who is our mobility segment market leader, and then Robert Nelson, who did the introduction. He's our mobility segment growth leader. All of us are available to your disposal. Feel free to contact us anytime, and below you'll see our contact information. So let's get into the meat of what we wanna to discuss today. This is a very quick recap. We won't spend much time on these initial slides, but these are the building blocks of what we have available today. And what we want people to know is that Again, your pathway is different than others. So multiple technologies, different certification processes, different streamlined delivery systems, all of these components serve as your pathway materials. So whether they're building blocks or foundation or lights that go on that specific path, these are all available to your AMCO sales and development representatives. These are available to you and your organization to use with your other partners. And we continue to partner with other organizations, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, to continue to develop and create new content that's available to our customers. So again, these are the building blocks. These are our foundation. This is what we build that pathway with. And then beyond that, we walk down that pathway for you and for your customers as well to explain the technologies, the certifications that come behind it. This is just a, a simplistic sales strategy guideline that we can take a look at. This talks about the different sources of materials that are there. This is how we start to begin that transformative approach. This is how we begin to look at the differentiated technologies that are available in the market space today. A couple of things to keep in mind is that, you know, today more than ever, there is multiple technologies available to you. There's different technologies that we have to choose from, but there are limitations to things that are here. So whether it's post-consumer recycled polymers or post-industrial recycled polymers, um, they have different attributes. And, you know, if it's going to be a custom tight tolerance application where you have differentiated requirements, it's going to make things difficult if you're using 100% post-consumer recycled. This is why we have to have multiple buckets, different avenues and different pathways. And then we move forward to the bio attributed or the advanced molecular recycled materials. They give you more differentiation, more capabilities. Again, this is a tool for your disposal, something to you guys that you guys can utilize with your customers and the rest of the folks that are in your organization. So just to give you a quick recap, um, scope one, two and three emissions. The primary focus of today is going to be on scope three. So if we develop a relationship with you and your organization and we supply product to you, supply plastics to you, those would be considered scope three because those are outside of your control. What we are finding with all the organizations that we work with is that scope three emissions equate to 70 to 90 percent of 
our customers use. So again, this is something that's out of your control, but it's something where you can make the most significant impact immediately. If you convert one pound of material to one pound of sustainable material, the immediate dividends are significant. And thus, these are the things that we need to explore further within this design and development phase. So pathway technologies, we try to bucket it. And, and again, as an organization, we want to shape the market space so that it's easier to understand. Just as it is going into Starbucks for the first time and trying to understand how to order what you need from a size to the additives and the different components that you want to put into it, we need to make this menu more simplistic. We need to make it into block chunks that are easy to digest, simple for you to process, and simple for you to explain. And in doing so, we've kind of created five different buckets whether it ranges from post-consumer recycled all the way to the advanced molecular recycling. And when we have this transformative approach, we need to have this transformative approach moving forward because without it, we, we kind of get stuck in a box. Um, you know, if we're going to design for post-consumer recycle, which should be your first choice, uh, because again, this takes post-consumer waste uh, that would be intended for landfill. We have the ability to recapture it, break it down, and turn it back into initial product. Because that takes the least amount of energy to do conversion on, you can maximize your carbon reductions because there's less processing, less engineering that has to go along into the phases of this particular material. That being said, it's limited. There's not a much, uh, there's not much natural availability. There's not easy to color. It's not easy to hit specific specifications. So then some cases we have to fast forward. And I kind of see both the bioattributed mass balance and the advanced molecular recycling somewhat the same. I wouldn't classify it as two and three per se, but we do this just for sequencing and understanding. The reason why we skip over the post-industrial is because there are limitations in regards to certifications. When we look at legislative process, what we talked about in the first presentation, we still need legislators to understand what it means to be post-industrial. We as an industry still have to do a better job of defining what post-industrial is. So we move forward to the bioattributed mass balance and the advanced molecular recycle. And the exciting news with the bioattributed and the advanced recycle is that these are using traditional conventional assets. So they're not creating brand new assets. They're not, cre they're not utilizing something that has to be created from scratch. So you gain efficiencies in this process. And in turn, we're getting the molecular feedstocks. So we're taking, for instance, in the bioattributed, we're taking cooking oils that you find from McDonald's or Wendy's or Burger King, whoever your fast food uh, location of choice is. And what we're doing is we're taking those cook oil, cooking oils and processing them down to bioavailable benzene or bioavailable naphtha, and then using those building blocks and converting then those into phenol and then bisphenol, and then all of a sudden you have polycarbonate. Or if you take the benzene, taking those benzenes and adding those to acrylonitrile and butadiene rubber, and you end up having a bioattributed ABS or PCABS for that matter. The difference between the bioattributed and advanced molecular recycling, bioattributed does help to divert away from carbon-based resources, from crude being extracted from the earth. Um, and again, it's using resources like potato starch waste or corn husk waste or agricultural bio or livestock waste, and then converting those into the conventional building blocks that are needed to make polymers. The advanced molecular recycle, the unique factor that you have, and again, this is why this choice system and transformative thinking is required, is that the advanced molecular recycling actually takes from waste that's hard to recycle. So let's say you have mixed waste, you have one through seven in your recycling codes. In some cases, you've got multi-layer processes or two-shot molding, or you have other components. The exciting part about advanced molecular recycling is we can take products or even films for that matter that have layers of polypropylene, polystyrene, and polyethylene contained within them and still convert those into a usable pyrolytic oil, which is used as a building block. So the advanced molecular recycling materials help take that waste that would have been incinerated and convert that back into a product. And in turn, what we look at is we get carbon reductions in the range of 19 to 63%. On the bioattributed, we can get 25% to 100% carbon neutrality. So again, there's lots of avenues, lots, lots of different characteristics. If you want to say it comes from specific waste streams, you go one direction. If you want to go for the highest overall carbon reduction, you can go another direction. So that's why it's important to refer back to consultants at AMCO. We're here to support you and kind of walk you through those processes. So Let's move forward to the exterior of the vehicle. Um, you know, I've got these animated slides in here so that we can at least just have some transition, but at the same time, it allows me to drink coffee or kind of uh, drink some water. Uh, but let's move forward to the exterior of the vehicle and let's talk a little bit more about some of the designs and some of the materials that we can select. 
Keeping in mind, we have a line card available for you that's available through our website. So if you visit Amco Polymers and click on the sustainability tab, you can find our line card. So the, these products that we're talking about today are available on our line card. We'll actually have an updated presentation for you so that you can see the line card in the presentation as well. So moving forward, simplistic design, call vent. Um, you know, this, as we move through a design from an engineering process, Typically, what we want to do is we want to choose the right material for the application, and that is determining a balance of requirements. Some folks can go in the direction of saying, I'd like to have the best, more ro ro robust material to choose in the application where I have outstanding UV characteristics, physical properties, but I don't want to sacrifice the bio attributed or I don't want to sacrifice the sustainable content. In that, we can present the Ineos Styrolution Loran Echo ASA material portfolio. But in some cases, the density might be too high, um, you know, or you can say, you know, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a post-consumer content. Well, we have a Ravago Echo uh, fully post-consumer recycle and post-industrial recycle content product that gives you a lower density. You can make more parts with less material, reducing your shipping. So different angles, multiple pathways that we already can see here. But from an engineering and design perspective, what we want to focus on here is finding that balance. So what we have with the Rovago Mofil TPO, typically you'll have 20, 10 to 30 percent talc fill that goes in these particular designs. What that does is it creates an intermediate density solution. So instead of being 1.2 or 1.15, you end up with 1.10 grams per cubic centimeter. So it's intermediate versus the polypropylene, it's 0 0.090 grams per cubic centimeter, which would be the lowest. But again, it doesn't have the stiffness, doesn't have the uh, impact resistance that you may want it to have. That's why we look at this intermediate design and would focus more on the MoFill. We have life cycle analysis pending on these particular products, but you can see, depending upon how you choose, you can range from 25% to 80% carbon reduction. Now, with the TPO, the other advantage you get is you've got non-carbon-based additives that are going in there that are not, it's essentially finite supply, more readily available in the marketplace. It all comes down to the messaging. So there's a lot of creative things that we can do. We can be very um, engineering-minded depending upon how we make these decisions, but there's lots of decisions that we can make in the process that yield different results at the end of our sustainable path. So let's look at exterior mirrors. And again, just like the previous, multiple opportunities here, depending upon the avenue that you decide to choose, it's a choose your own adventure uh, scenario. Um, that being said, we're here to guide you down that process, but looking to give you the best overall appeal. If a consumer base is looking for something, we hear a lot about ocean derived waste. We have a product through our Rovago parent company called Hylon Ocean. And this particular component, it's sourced from fishing nets that come from commercial fishermen. We've actively worked with the community to collect these fishing nets, break them down <laughs> into a usable resource, and convert them into the nylon six and six six feedstocks, and then use those in a compounded format into a thirty percent or twenty percent or ten percent glass filled nylon six that can be utilized for different exterior mirror applications. Uh, in turn, it really depends on the specification that you require. If your customer wants to have something that has a lot of consumer appeal, I would push you in the direction of the ocean material. Excuse me, ocean materials. Beyond that, you know, again, we can choose from anywhere from that post-consumer recycle, mechanical recycle materials, all the way up into the advanced material, advanced molecular recycled range. It all depends on your scope. One other one to kind of highlight for you too, as well, is through Sabic, our distribution partner. Uh, we also can offer the Norel Bio series. So Norel is a unique product in which, if we're looking at a design to eliminate steps in the process and have a full life cycle analysis, we can eliminate primers and different additives that are required to get paint to adhere to the surface. So versus a nylon, the Norel uh, components actually have better bondability within different paint systems. So if we eliminate specific substances of very high concern, your sustainability percentage tends to rise. So it really is dependent upon what your needs are, what your customer is looking for. What we're just trying to show you is that there's multiple different avenues to take a look at. We have to have a transformative approach, depending upon what your needs are, are going to be different than another customer or another producer down the line. That being said, it's required by us to give you multiple sustainable solutions. Exterior door handles. 
Um, you know, we see a lot of PCABS used in this particular facility or this this location. Uh, some folks use acetal for improved buzz squeak rattle. There's other folks that are using different types of components, even nylons in these applications. We're going to focus on Covestro's Bayblend RE series. And so RE, that, that basically means that the material comes from a biocircular feedstock. Again, bioattributed. So what does it mean to be bioattributed? It comes from either cooking oils or CTO tall oil, which is wood waste, which comes from the furniture industry, or it can come from another sustainable bioattributed source. These particular products, what they yield is that they give you the same physical properties as your standard product. So even though it comes from a bioattributed resource, it does nothing to change the molecular structure. You cannot physically tell the difference between a Bayblend T85XF versus a Bayblend T85XFRE. It's run on the same production facility line. The chemical derivatives that are used are the same. It's just that it's bio-derived as opposed to be being crude oil sourced or carbon sourced from a light petroleum feed stream. Uh, other thing to take in consideration is that there's different formulas that we can create to have different levels of bio content yielded in there. Another advantage to the cabestral process is that it's ISCC plus certified. So that stands for the International Sustainability Carbon Credit Certification System, in which it uses dedicated, audited, segregated bookkeeping to ensure that the material you're purchasing comes with the necessary certifications and credits beyond it. What this does is it allows you to make claims on your door handle to say that it's got 25% uh, recycled content or bioattributed content. Um, and then you can also have your, your life cycle analysis certify that carbon reduction. Having a certified system from the beginning of chain to the end of the life cycle is very important and critical, specifically if you're going to make claims in regards to bio content or recycle content in your finished products. And we can dive into that further into our third step in this series of webinars. Window seals, you know, headlight seals, fuel fill adapters, they have a lot of different um, requirements. Some require adhesion to other applications. So in the fuel fill ad adapter, you're going to have to have molecular adhesion to polypropylene. Um, you know, headlight seals are sometimes standalone, but if you need to have molecular compatibility to a polycarbonate or to an ABS, you would choose a TPU. If you want to have uh, something that has molecular affinity to a polypropylene or polyethylene, you would choose a TPV. Uh, TPV is basically comprised of polypropylene highly cross-linked with EPDM rubber. The TPU is a thermoplastic urethane that has different poly oils in it to create different uh, derivative softness and, and different characteristics. Um, and it really is incumbent to work with your applications development engineer at AMCO to discuss the differentiations between these products because there's different compression set, there's different sealing characteristics that are required for the application. What we're trying to show you here, though, is that, you know, you can either get up to 50% carbon content that's sourced from biomass in the Covestro Desmopan EC series, um, resulting in lower carbon output, lower greenhouse gas, or you can look at a 50% post-consumer recycled product from Selenese and the Santaprene products um, that can give you variable hardnesses from 50 shore A all the way up to 90 shore A and have different compression set values that are there and still yield 50% certified post-consumer recycled content. So multiple avenues, multiple different directions, different technologies getting you to the same yields. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just really what you want to have as your reward at the end of the cycle. Front grills focusing on the INEO Styrolution ASA. So we see a lot of front grill design made out of ASA. The advantage of the Enio Styrolution Echo ASA is that it, again, comes from a bio-derived styrene that comes from bio-derived benzene. So again, we're talking about cooking oils that were waste. We're not just taking pure cooking oils. We're taking waste cooking oils and converting those into the bio-attributed feedstocks, building blocks for what you need. This particular product, there's a product that's typically specified by multiple OEMs across the board, which we typically see as the Loran S778T. There is a Loran S778T Echo series that has different uh, bio content ranging from 50% to 30%. Uh, for instance, the 30% bio content version, at, version actually yields 39% carbon reduction. And this is actually available on the data sheets and through further life cycle, life cycle analysis or product carbon footprints. Um, and it's certified on the data as 39%. Um, the advantage that you have is that these products not only come with the bioattributed feedstocks, but they're also 
IACC plus certified. So you get that chain of custody from where the material came from to where it was derived and produced and to when it was delivered to your specific door. And it gives you that integrity on your chain of custody, which is important. Um, you know, again, lots of material options that we can look at. Unfortunately, I just don't have time to go through all of them right now. Um, looking towards forward lighting, headlight support, brackets. Um, Want to highlight the Selenex Echo PBT. Uh, again, material comes from biomass content, up to 40% renewable content. And in turn, what you can yield is up to 50% carbon reduction. If you were to convert one pound of the bio PBT, Selenex PBT, into one pound versus one pound of your standard material, you yield 50% carbon reduction right out of the gate. Um, and in turn, it gives you those scope three reductions that are tangible, feasible, and rateable to move along with it. Uh, you know, looking at the front or forward exterior lens applications, uh, you know, again, we have the Covestro bio attributed polycarbonates. Um, these particular products, again, fully circular feedstocks, 25 to 100% fully carbon neutral scenario, ISCC plus certified. Um, and looking at, you know, rear lighting, rear lens exterior, multiple options. What I want to highlight here is taking a step a little bit to the side. Um, in this particular application, we don't have, and what we're presenting here is the Ineos Star Illusion NASXC. So this is uh, similar to acrylic, um, similar makeup. Um, you change out the P for an S. So instead of PMMA, it's SMMA. So styrene methyl methacrylate uh, is, is actually the, the derivative of what you're looking at. The advantage to this particular product is that it's lighter weight than standard acrylics. So it processes easier too as well. So you can go into thicker walls faster fill times, improved cycle time that comes into this particular product. So the lighter the weight, the more parts you can make with it, it's less material, and it has an improved, carb, improved carbon footprint. We are working on, and they are working on NAS series products, and there are some derivatives that are available today that would be in the bio-derived formats. But again, you know, this is just giving you an idea to the differentiated bucket of intelligent design. Pillar covers. Um, you know, typically we see a lot of painted materials, PCA ABS, PCA ASA, ASA. Uh, you know, again, you know, we can even choose a mechanically recycled ABS for this that has similar properties to standard prime. Multiple different directions that we can go. Um, you know, the important factor is just choosing what's going to work best for your application. Um, you know, not to sound repetitive, but again, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to say, hey, listen, to think transformatively doesn't necessarily mean moving too far down the line from what you're used to conventionally. Uh, the great news is that there are products that are available, and this presentation is largely just to show you that there are many options available within the great slates today. You know, we went from 86 to tens of thousands very quickly. Moving on to interior components. So let's focus on lock knobs and handles and buttons. Um, you know, I'm only going to focus right now on the lock knobs. You know, these are locations where, you know, intrinsic sound quality is very important. So there's a lot of questions about buzz, squeak and rattle. And the great news that we can tell you today is that we have through Selenies a bio attributed um, certified product that's ISCC plus certified that comes from bio attributed methanol. Methane is you're kind of aware, or if you're not aware, it can come from different resources. It can come from landfill off gas. It can come from livestock waste capture. It can come from other resources that create that biogas methanol, and that methanol is put through the standard system. And thus, if you're using Celcon M90 Echo or Celcon M90 today, and you wanted to convert to an Echo version that gives you close to 50% reduction in carbon, you can go to the Celcon Echo. B series, uh, and it gives you the same fingerprint, the same processing. Nothing's needed to be done into your application other than just converting to this product. In some cases, because regulatory bodies now are seeing these bio attributed and advanced molecular recycled materials and the fingerprints being the same, we're starting to see regulatory bodies are not starting. Regulatory bodies are seeing them as the same product. So thus, in turn, it requires little to no requalification. All it would be is a paperwork trail to say that you're using Cellcon M90 Echo B versus Cellcon M90 standard. Um, and again, there's multiple options that are here. Uh, moving forward, we hope to be presenting more details on carbon capture technology that Selenies has been working on. So instead of just getting close to 50% carbon reduction in the carbon capture, we're seeing ranges of 80% plus 
Um, and carbon capture is where you're just capturing carbon off gas from manufacturing facilities and using that as a building block to convert to bioavailable methane uh, or methanol. The same process differentiated approach. Let's look at dashboard clusters and uh, clusters and, and control screens. And you know, again, you need clarity, you need visible appeal, you need uh, uh, light transmission. Um, you know, again, we can look at polycarbonates that are based on bio attributed. We can look at um, advanced recycled materials. Again, you know, highlighting the the NAS XC series. This particular product, again, lighter weight, no drying um, required where acrylic does require drying. And, and if you eliminate that drying phase, that's a significant amount of carbon off gas that you can account for. Um, again, it, it requires life cycle analysis, which we're happy to help with. Uh, but again, gives you a potential future for a bio attributed material too as well. Um, in the European market space, we see a lot of folks using clear ABS here too as well, because it doesn't have as stringent UV requirements. Um, through our partner, Lote Chemical, we also have an advanced molecular recycle material where we chemically upcycle waste from acrylic sheet uh, byproducts. So it's waste that's not used in signage or other applications. And in turn, we can actually extract that methyl methacrylate component from the acrylic sheet and use that to produce a clear MABS type material. Um, this particular product would be UL certified and it has up to 30% recycled content certification that comes along with it too as well. Bin liners, cup holders, tambour doors, a lot of things to go through here. But, you know, again, what I want to focus on is a differentiated approach, post-consumer recycle and post-industrial. Through our partner, Total Energies, we have a polypropylene product that's either available in impact copolymer or homopolymer, depending on the rigidity heat resistance that's required. This particular material does come with a green certification, green circle certified upon request, um, and in turn offers similar properties to your standard prime products. Uh, it would have outstanding molecular compatibility to TPE, so basically like a Santa Prime Echo TPV that has up to 50% recycled content. A lot of variable things that we can look at when we move to the cup holders or if we look at the uh, other containers and bins, we can use polypropylene, we can use TPOs multiple different avenues to move down moving forward. LED accent lights for interior design is important to take a look at. Um, you know, keeping a focal point, you know, Amco, we have our own branded TriStar series materials. This is from that post-industrial bucket that we can look at. Keeping in mind that if we need certifications and if we need other backup support, we'd probably want to move down the line to the Covestro Macrolon RE LED series. Same quality as your standard LED 2245, uh, same quality as what's there, but you get your bio attributed feedstock that comes along with it. You get ISCC plus certification and you get the gains that you need from a present consumer appeal. So it really just depends on the visual components. So that's where it requires that transformative thinking. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, again, we've got a product that's available. Same thing as your prime standard products that give you uh, the, the same distance to extinction of light. Uh, give you the same aesthetic appeal and, and visual components that are there. And depending upon what you need from an impact characteristic to physical properties, these are things that we have to kind of scroll down and develop that pathway for you. Move forward to EV. I mean, again, mobility encompasses a lot, but what we want to do is we want to show you some solutions that we can work on today and give you a, a, an immediate return in carbon reduction. So scope three reductions. Look at the cell holders, the crash protection, the frames, the tabs, the cooling. Um, you know, looking at differentiated approach, um, you know, these can be either, uh, you know, you may have chemical resistance requirements. So we work with a partner in Viroplast. They have a PCPBT or a PCPCTG. PCTG or, or copolyester actually has better glycol resistance. So depending upon the exposure, if you're in the cooling components, these are things that we want to take into consideration. Beyond that, we also have the bio content available PBTs. And then we also have a product from our, our partner Sabic in the, the, the Elkrin IQ PBT. And, and this is a product that's derived from post-consumer recycled uh, waste water bottles, taking those PET water bottles, breaking them down, you're doing a chemical depolymerization, and then getting that polyester component to recreate PBT, and in turn having similar physical properties to a Velox uh, prime product where you can't tell the difference between the materials. 
again, multiple different directions, but the great news is that there's very few applications that we don't have a sustainable alternative available. And that's really what I want everyone to take away from this presentation today is that there's really not many applications that we can't provide solutions on other than where we have limitations in the higher temperature ranges. Battery top covers, uh, electrical interconnection frames, battery cell separators, a lot of different scenarios that we can look at, but I wanted to kind of focus specifically on the advanced molecular recycled here. Through our partner, Chevron Phillips, they have a product called Anew, and Anew is based on pyrolytic oil that comes from circular waste. So, you know, you say a milk jug that you throw away in your recycling bin today, it goes through the processing, it makes its way to the landfill area. We have the ability to recapture this milk jug and create infinite use of the chemical feedstocks that are there. And in turn, we yield the Anew portfolio. Uh, the Anew portfolio is the same as your standard Chevron Phillips high density, low density, linear low density polyethylene. There is no physical property differentiation between it. It's actually produced on the same commercial assets that are available today. And in thus, there's all the same regulatory compliance. So if we need chemical resistance, if we need barrier resistance, none of that is sacrificed in the process. And along with it, it comes with an ISCC plus certification. So if you wanna make claims that you're using circular feedstocks, if you wanna claim a specific recycle content, that ISCC plus certification is very important moving forward. Looking at charging stations. Um, again, this is something that you know continues to evolve. We've got a lot of demand in the market space that's going to be required coming in the future. So it's going to require multiple different types of materials. What we want to say specifically in the EV market space, so not only for the batteries, but also for the charge stations, we're selling the message that this is a sustainable solution. Well, beyond that, we need to deliver these products in sustainable designed materials. So not only do we need to look at the materials, we need to look at the logistics systems too as well. And we look far beyond the entire scope and it all depends on how you set these boundaries moving forward. So simplistic, just keeping things straightforward, looking at charging station applications. You know, we're getting these things designed to be more tighter, smaller, um, more efficient. So as we continue to, to start to enclose components where they've got heat elements or elements that are generating extra heat, we still need to have materials that heat hit those higher temperature profiles. Um, usually what we see on these exterior components is we'll see, uh, you know, UV resistant uh, ASA or polycarbonate, which we have to offer here. In this particular case, I just wanted to highlight that we have Altum polyetheremide that's available in a bioattributed source product, uh, yielding carbon reduction, yielding alternative supply source to typical traditional crude oil based materials. Uh, and again, in these particular applications where there's temperature, dimensional, impact resistance, cold weather environment, the Sabic Altum polyetheremide is actually a great solution uh, that's available in the market space today. EV charging stations and applications. Uh, you know, again, we talked about the UV stabilized product. Well, Covestro has a flame retardant uh, 6487 that has ratings of 5EA and V0, depending upon the thickness that you're looking to design. It is bioattributed based, and depending upon the bioattributed or bioattribution content, we can yield different areas of carbon reduction all the way up to carbon neutrality. Lots of different components to look at here, but many different options that are available for supporting your specific needs. EV charging stations. Now, this is a little different when you're looking at the flexible cording, and you know you can use different components and different mixtures of polyethylene, EPV, or even TPU for that matter. As we get into these higher ratings where we require more temperature resistant, durable materials, that's when we look at the Sabic materials. You know, Sabic has really introduced a really unique product in Norel Flex. It'll have a lower density than typical urethanes or thermal set EPDM rubbers. Um, but again, it can be made in a bioattributed content. It can give you more ductility, better chemical resistance, uh, better hydrolytic stability. Um, and then in turn, if we need to go even higher on the temperature range, even to aerospace charging applications, we have the Sabic Siltum, which is basically derived from Ultum with siloxane additives. And then it can also be created and fast formulated in bio attributed formulations. So lots to talk about, lots to digest, but there's many things that we can take away from this. Uh, you know, last but not least, we made mention about that Sabic Elkrin IQ PBT. And again, there's a great story behind it. You know, these particular materials and the Elkrin product portfolio, the technology has been available for some time. So efficiencies are very good. 
but we're saving these water bottles from making their way into our waterways and our landfills. So it's a visual appeal. It's very easy for your customers and your customers' customers to understand that we're taking these waste PET bottles and turning them back into prime property materials. So again, no differentiated physical properties, chemical resistance can get you to that same level of a standard prime PBT. And it's also customizable for your specific applications. You know, what we want to do here today is that, you know, th this is going to wrap up this particular segment, but some key takeaways to keep in consideration is that, number one, there's very few applications in which we'll not be able to provide a sustainable alternative solution. This is very different than from a year ago. As we move forward, we're seeing thousands upon thousands of new technologies that are being introduced. But I'm excited to say that today, we can be challenged with nearly any application and develop a sustainable pathway for you and your organization. You know, transformative thinking is required. So to achieve a maximum greenhouse gas and carbon footprint reduction, we really need to be able to think outside of the box. It also requires transformative collaboration between organizations, and that's what we're here to do. We want to create this content so that it's digestible, but we also want to make it available to it so you can use it as a point of reference moving forward. Uh, you know, the mobility market space is definitely going to have to utilize multiple different technologies. There are supply constraints with post-consumer recycled. We'd love to put everything in post-consumer, but there's just not enough of it available due to the demand. The other thing that we have to take in consideration is that there's complexity, color, physical properties that are required for the wide ranging of applications that are in the mobility <laughs> market space, and thus it requires these items. Uh, post-consumer recycled, mechanically recycled materials, just as a takeaway, you can get up to 80% reduced carbon footprint. Uh, Post-industrial is limited to certifications, but it's needed. It's a pathway. We use it in the other technologies. In advanced molecular recycling, we use post-industrial recycle to boost some of the pyrolytic oil-based feedstocks. Again, there's a need for it, but we need better legislation. We need better definition. Uh, Bioattributed mass balance. 25 to 100 percent co2 reduction it depends on the choices that you make but again it's available and here for our needs and then from the advanced molecular recycle polymers you know these help to reduce hard to recycle mixed waste feed streams and you can see depending upon the boundaries that you set 19 to 63 percent reduction in carbon from there i'll open it up to questions hey, thanks adam just want to remind everybody to um use the question and answer feature, and uh, we will definitely get to all your questions. There was one first one in. Uh, does using Fisherman's Net as feedstock have some limit to how many pounds per year can be converted to nylon? Yeah, there, there's there's definitely um, some limitations that are there. Um, you know, that's one thing that we have to continue to address. Um, so when we tar start to design that pathway, you know, there's a finite supply. There's going to be more supply that's coming available in the marketplace. This is why we're lo working in local fishermen. We're working to try and source these in higher capacities. So from a, a design perspective, I would not place it into a huge application that requires significant demand. Um, you know, taking into consideration that there's only finite supply as more becomes available. But that doesn't mean that you can't sublet or look at other materials to blend in. So, you know, if you want to say that you're if you're looking for that consumer appeal saying made with ocean based materials, you can add it in in 10 percent to your existing prime material or you can find another recycled variable product, either bio attributed um, or find another resource that we can utilize uh, to get to your specific goals. So there's ways that we can parse these things out to extend the supply chain. OK, thank you, Adam. Another question from the audience, um, do we have offerings for polystyrene applications? Yeah, so there there, there are uh, styrenic offerings. I mean, we've got different contents that depending upon whether it's general purpose polystyrene to high impact polystyrene, we do have offerings that are available uh, from the post consumer side. And there are derivative other products that are bio attributed uh, that other supply chains can offer. So, you know, in this particular case, Styrenics is a commodity type material. Um, there's not a significant amount of capital investment into polystyrene, polypropylene, and polyethylene on the advanced side, largely because it's so cheap to make today from crude sourced supplies. That's changing as legislation comes forward, that's changing, and we continue to have more opportunities. And thus, that's why we have the Marlex and new on the polyethylene. But from the polystyrene perspective, we do have some post consumer and post industrial type solutions available for you. Okay, good. Another question today, so much out there, 
How do I get started in picking sustainable products? That's why you guys need to find a circular resource. You need to find a resource that knows where it's at. So at Amco Polymers, it's part of our heritage. This has been part of our DNA since 1955. And then our parent company, Revago, since 1961. I'm 100% dedicated to the resources. Bob is 100% dedicated to the mobility market space. And by having that dedication and not having dual roles, it allows us to be more efficient in how we can guide you down that pathway. So that's why it's important for you to be partnered with a supply chain that understands the technologies, understands the legislation, and understands what the process is moving forward. And that's what we're here for. Yeah, and I think you've said it best before, right? You're just going to lay out options, right, to try to meet the goals that they have. Yes. And we have multiple options, right? So everybody likes a different birthday cake, right? You know, some people like strawberries, some like chocolate, some like vanilla. And then there's some people that want sparklers. That's how we look and that's how we approach applications in in in, in general. Um, you know, Amco Polymers, we're an agnostic supply. So agnostic means that we're not stuck to one specific material or we're not going to come in and try and sell you nylon into an ABS application. We have to be diversified. We have to offer multiple different avenues because the differentiation for what Ford Motor Company wants and what Coca-Cola wants are totally different. So depending upon the consumer appeal, depending upon the economics, that all creates different pathways. And that's why we really need to think transformatively moving forward so we can support your specific needs. Perfect. Okay. Um, does Amco have available products that can be used for charging station uh, interior electrical parts? So it, it really is dependent upon what the, the thermal load is going to be, what the RTI rating that's going to be required. So well, as we advance into the higher levels of the polymer pyramids, that's when we start to become limited because uh, those particular technologies, we're, we're working on different recycled contents, we're working on different feedstocks to build those. Uh, but, you know, again, it's all specific in regards to thermal load, application, requirements, impact. So we do have solutions. It really depends on what the limits and the barriers that you set for the application are. Um, and again, that's why we have to take a look at those at a case by case scenario. OK, <clears throat> looks like we got one more last question here. Both bio attributed and advanced recycling create prime property materials. What's the difference between these two processes? So again, it's it's really based on how you want to market these particular products. So key takeaway from this question, and it's a very good question, is that both the bioattributed and the advanced molecular recycled materials yield the same properties as your standard virgin prime products. So you can't tell the molecular difference, and they're actually being mixed in the products that you use today. So even though you're you're using these products, you're probably getting some of the bioattributed and the advanced recycled content in the materials that you buy today. You're just not paying for or just getting the so-called certified product that comes with the segregated, degraded bookkeeping. So th the difference between the two is the bioattributed, uh, you know, again, diverts resources away from, you know, finite supplied carbon-based technologies, which is great, and does give carbon reduction, but it is not recapturing waste, uh, mechanically recycled or post-consumer waste. Um, so if you want to say from a visual perspective, you need to have something with that circularity that's in there. We want to focus more on the advanced recycle technology because we can say it started as a, a Starbucks cup lid or it started as a polyethylene milk jug and then it got put into my finished product. Um, that's where the cell difference is. Um, but again, there's differences there. there. And, and again, we need both because you know, again, finite supply, um, you know, we're, we're building supply chain, we're building products, but we've got commercially available solutions. And that's why it requires us to have these multiple different technologies moving forward. So the differentiation between the bio attributed and the advanced recycled is they both use mass balance, but one is using post-consumer and post-industrial waste feed streams. The other is using bio attributed feed streams. Pretty much like you said, how do you market it, right? At the end. <clears throat> 100%. So Adam, thank you for uh, your time today. And we appreciate everybody that uh, uh, was online. Just a reminder, you will get a copy of the presentation uh, today if you uh, register and uh, are in attendance. So we look forward to uh, having you uh, attend our third session, uh, which comes up in August. So stay tuned for more details on that. So thanks everyone and enjoy the rest of your day.
Yeah, in that third session, we're going to focus on setting attainable goals. So we'll talk about what it means to choose the different product carbon footprints and how that's going to help you to move forward too as well. So thank you again. Perfect. Have a great day.